Thanks, Roberto. Um, so good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm going to sort of go back to Giancarlo's uh, presentation and sort of pick up a piece of that and, and dive into a bit more detail. Um, so this is the structure I want to cover quite briefly. Why is there a funding challenge for social enterprises? The life cycle of social enterprises, funding options for different stages of development, and then some policy recommendations. So I'm purposely talking about the piece of the SSE that doesn't include the solidarity bits. Right? So this is the social enterprises without the cooperatives, without the mutuals. And the logic here is that that segment of the social and solidarity economy actually has pretty cool systems that it's set up for itself. It's created its parallel financing structures. Um, cooperatives have created cooperative banks or they've created credit unions uh, and that those credit unions have aggregated and um, federated into federations of credit unions. They've often in many places created their own insurance companies. Uh, so they've created a whole parallel financial system for the, the cooperative sector, which I just, it's beautiful when it works wonderfully. Um, it doesn't often work wonderfully, but I think where it's working, it's, 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 a, yeah, it's brilliant to behold. And I think that's a model that we should really be sort of keeping in mind. How do we enhance that? How do we make it more effective in places where it's not working well? And how do we build on that for segments of the market that it's not working for? So that's why I want to talk about the social enterprises themselves. The other piece, where they're not so well organized and they're not federated and they don't have systems and processes to, that is catering to their particular needs. So starting at the demand side, why is there a funding challenge for this segment of market? Well, first. Um, for all startups, it's a challenge getting financing, so that's it's natural for businesses that are just uh, getting started. I'd say there's possible capacity constraints from the entrepreneur side that they may not have the the tools or the resources to be able to um, provide financiers with the information that they need to make good lending decisions or investment decisions. And then as new business models, these approaches are untested and may take time to reach profitability. So this is one of the challenges that social enterprises are facing. Getting started with a new approach, um, we need to have a track record often to be able to access financing. And then the last point on the demand side is, is very particular to this market segment, which is the, the, there may be ethical challenges in pricing for viability. That because they are contributing to social outcomes, because the, the social nature of their enterprise, they may not be able to price their services high enough to be able to create a, an attractive business model. Um, so this is one of the interesting dilemmas that social enterprises have is, you know, how much can we charge? So the challenges are perhaps even bigger on the supply side. Um, and I think we've, jean claude has talked about them a bit already, but perception from funders that social enterprises are not profitable. So this is a perception that it may not be true, but this is certainly something that's rooted in the financial sector that's there. Um, another dimension is that society assumes that the social economy should be the subsidized economy, um, in which case that reflects uh, on the, the, say the lender or the investor's perspective um, and has a, influences the way they view this potential, say, target group. Many social enterprises are subsidized which uh, could have the negative impact of driving away private capital. Funders do not know how to assess the double or even the triple bottom line of the, the performance. And people keep talking about the impact side. And this is, it's important that we keep talking about it because if we're positioning social enterprises as um, sort of contributing to social outcomes and that's part of the attractive feature of them, uh, that's that should be financed in a way that makes sense for the businesses, but also makes sense for the funders who have a, a who ideally have a prior, who can prioritize that social dimension. But most funders do not seek this similar balance, uh, creating a social finance return gap with, say, the traditional uh, traditional financing sectors. So, as, as Giancarlo mentioned, that. 
different stages of enterprise development required different interventions. Um, and so he sort of articulated this already, but you can go through, you can sort of, you can see how social enterprises evolve. And they don't necessarily have to get to growth. Growth may not be the ultimate objective. It may be that enterprises can stay, you know, at a medium size and continue to achieve their, their, their um, stated value, their objectives. Um, but sort of recognizing that they go through different stages then leads into, well, what does the financing needs at those different stages? So one of the things that um, people say in the, in the microcredit field um, think about is, well, let's give loans to people because that's going to help those businesses to, to grow. Um, and I'd say there's some flaws in the, the perspective because, in fact, you don't want to give a loan to a startup um, necessarily. You, you want to be able to make sure that that business is able to repay the loan so that there is a funding stream in place that can repay the loan. If you give a loan to a business that doesn't have a funding stream to repay the loan, then you're, you're putting them in a disadvantage. You're, you're yeah, causing more problems than you're so solving. So we shouldn't be thinking that throwing credit at the problem is going to solve the problem. We need to think about what stage of development the business is and what its needs are at those stages. And certainly the beginning, at the idea stage or even the startup stage, thinking around grants as a, a better source. Um, and grant here, I mean, it could be um, contribution from friends or family. It could be a crowdfunding type solution, which would be interesting to talk about whether people have any experiences with crowdfunding, because I think it, it lends itself very nicely to um, the social enterprises. Um, and so these are things that we can do to um, yeah, stimulate crowdfunding for social enterprises could be a really interesting conversation to be having. Um, sort of social enterprise business competitions is another way of getting some startup capital into businesses that aren't loans. Um, and then even as we move into sort of the startup phase, we're still not talking about debt yet. We really want them to start to generate some cash flow before we start thinking about making them repay a loan. Um, the venture philosophy Philanthropy is a really interesting model as well, where um, sort of venture capitalists are looking for interesting ideas that um, generate a social return as well as a, a, a financial return. Uh, and so they are more flexible or more willing to um, not require financing returns so early. So, uh, so it's very patient capital. Once you do have sort of a cash flow, then we can be thinking about the credit side of things, the debt side. Um, and here, typically you would see for social enterprises beginning more with um, development banks or with ethical banking um, rather than sort of for-profit um, commercial banks. And the, the logic there is that um, you know, they have a, a higher alignment. The development bank or an ethical bank may be more interested in the social outcomes than the commercial banks and sort of be more willing to work with the enterprise to be able to, to meet its, um, its financing needs. Um, the logic of why maybe we want to get to the commercial banks eventually is that there's a limit to say, at least from the development bank's perspective, how much resources they have available. And so if they're Limited resources should be targeted to those enterprises, social enterprises in this case, that um, need those resources uh, the most. And so if I've gotten to the point where I can be weaned off of um, sort of government lending models to commercial models, even as a social enterprise, I think that's a, is a graduation success that we should applaud, um, and that leads, uh, allows sort of more subsidized uh, capital to be made available to those enterprises that um, need it the most. So that's sort of a sort of model of thinking about how the different financing tools are necessary at different stages of development. I want to wrap up with some sort of key recommendations that I think um, are useful takeaways and should be considered when we're thinking about public policy environments. First is that while we're talking about financing, it's really only one constraint. Um, and it may not even be the most important constraint. 
And so it's really critical that we think more holistically about the needs of social enterprises uh, and to make sure we have a, a more comprehensive package. And so it's one thing to talk about the financing piece, but we need to talk about it maybe in the ecosystem. Maybe that's the, what the message that Giancarlo has been saying all along. There's a role for government financing, uh, including grants and concessionary loans. And I think um, that's a really important piece of the conversation. We need to get governments on board in this conversation. Um, I think, you know, because the, say, the cooperative se sector has their own systems, um, we need to think about how can we create a similar set of systems, financial systems, for social enterprises that don't have a cooperative model. Uh, and it may be that coming at it from a development bank angle is the right approach, or maybe there's a whole new sort of line of ethical banking that we should be um, advocating for and promoting. Um, and that would be one of the areas that I think would be a very interesting conversation to be, to be having. Um, but for the government to get engaged, they need to make sure that they have the, the right tools and resources. Um, they need to have a way of identifying whether somebody really is a social enterprise. And so the whole conversation around sort of licensing or registering companies as social enterprises is important for a lot of different reasons, but if, if it's a particularly important if you're going to have concessionary funding um, from the governments to say who's eligible. We've well, got somebody who said, okay, you're eligible because you've gotten registered as a social enterprise. Um, another sort of key takeaway is that any windows for grants need to be very separate from windows for loans. What you don't want to do is to um, get the, the business to sort of think that I'm going to be able to get a grant here um, and I'm also going to get a loan, and the loan has the same sort of characteristics as a grant. Now, that may seem silly that, of course, a grant, and a grant and a loan are very separate, but if people get a loan from the same place that they get a grant, they may wonder why I have to repay this bit, but I don't have to repay that other bit. Uh, and so sort of having very clear delineation between grants and loans is a really important characteristic. Um, to serve this market, development banks need to have the right skill set. They really need to have the ability to value this double bottom line. Uh, and then really thinking about this idea of graduating successful social enterprises off of the subsidized um, resources and to commercial resources where it's possible. Um, and I don't want to push that too hard because, um, yeah, I don't want to then set them up for failure because the banks are, have a different agenda. Um, but I do want to make sure that the limited availability of subsidized resources gets channeled to those who need it the most. And so if I am a thriving business and I'm doing well, um, then I can sort of be weaned off of the subsidized capital. And then lastly, innovations like guarantee funds and blended finance can be designed to facilitate this transition. So the logic is that perhaps I can use a guarantee fund as a way of encouraging banks to lend to social enterprises um, by being able to take some of the risk involved in lending to them. So this is a way of sort of creating a bridge, uh, facilitating a transition from um, subsidized capital to, to commercial capital. So with that, I want to thank you for your attention and look forward to questions and conversations.